Here's the question. How do you allow people in your business to access corporate data on their personal smartphones? Well, that's the topic for today's video. But before we start, a quick introduction. My name is Jonathan Edwards from Integral IT. We help businesses all over the world with their Microsoft 365. So here's a scenario in most small businesses. People want the convenience to access work applications on their personal smartphones. Perhaps when they're outside the office, they want to reply to emails or they want to check their team's messages. This is known as BYOD. BYOD stands for bring your own device. And simplistically, it means that they can access your work data on their personal device. But here's the problem. Smartphones are still devices and they're accessing your work data. And the security of that is often completely overlooked by most small businesses. But here's the other side of the problem. If you start telling your employees that you want to completely manage their personal smartphone, they get a bit shirty. What? Will that mean you can look at my photographs? There's no way you can read my text messages on my phone. No way. So, what's the answer? Well, if you're using Microsoft 365, there is technology available to you to allow you to manage people's smartphones. Within Microsoft 365, there's a couple of bits of technology. There's something called MDM, which stands for Mobile Device Management. There's also something called NAM, which stands for Mobile Application Management. So what are these and what are the differences between the two? Well, with MDM, Mobile Device Management, it means that your company manages the whole device. You can do anything to that device. You can even wipe it completely. Now, as you can understand, a lot of people don't want you to have that kind of permission over their personal smartphones. So that is where mobile application management comes in. Whereas MDM manages the device, mobile application management just manages the corporate applications that are installed on that device. With NAM, it's much less intrusive and often users don't even know it's there. So it's a really nice middle ground between users using their own personal smartphones and keeping your company data secure. Now in a moment, I'm gonna jump onto that computer behind me and I'm gonna show you how to set up something called app protection policies in mobile application management. It's really straightforward. But before I do, let's just have a quick chat about licensing because that's fairly important. To access MDM or MAM, each user has to have an Intune license. Now Intune is part of Microsoft 365 Business Premium and that costs £18.10 per user per month. Now Business Premium is much more than just Intune. It's a full package that includes all the collaboration tools and all the security tools to run your business. Now without further ado, let's jump onto that computer behind me and let's get stuck in. So to start with, you need to be in the admin portal of Microsoft 365. I've logged in here. You can see I've got access to admin here, so I'll launch that. Now this is just a test tenancy that I have. Once that launches, just click on show all and you can see all our admin centers down here. What we want is endpoint manager. So we'll click and launch that. <clears throat> and then what we need to do is go onto apps and you can see here, we've got app protection policies. So let's click on there. Now you can see I've got a few test app protection policies in place at the moment for various devices, Android and iOS. But what I'm gonna do now is create a new one so I can just show you how it works. So we go to create policy. We choose what device it is. So it can be Windows, Android or iOS. I'm gonna choose iOS for those Apple devices. And then we name the policy. So we can name this anything we want. We can say my business iOS app protection policy. Click on next. And then, and then we've got to decide what apps we are targeting as part of this policy. So click on the drop down here. Now we've got three options. We've got all apps, all Microsoft apps and core apps. So if you want to look further into here, you can choose one. So I've chosen all apps there. 
And then you can simply click on here and it will show you what apps have been targeted. So all these apps have been targeted when we choose all apps. So close that one. We've got all Microsoft apps. And again, you've got all these Microsoft apps here. What I do with a lot of customers, or most of our customers, is choose the Microsoft Core apps. Okay, so I, I keep the application list nice and small. If we look at that, it's your Edge, it's your Excel, it's your Word, it's your Outlook. So these are the Microsoft Core apps. So I close that and click on Next. And here we're looking at data protection. So let's just go through these sections here. So the first one, so if someone's got a personal phone and they're backing up that phone to iCloud, which most people do, as it stands, they will also back up your company data. And we don't want them to do that because they are taking your company data out of your company and backing up to their personal iCloud. So I, I block this. So the next section is talking about sending organizational data to other apps. Again, at the minute, they can do pretty much what they want with organizational data because it's selected as all apps. What I choose here is policy managed apps, okay? So this allows us to send organizational data to other policy managed apps. An example of this might be copying and pasting from, from an email into a Word document or something like that. Both of those of policy managed applications. So the next section is about saving copies of organizational data. So I don't really want this to happen. At the minute, it's set to allow. So saving copies of organizational data could be, for example, saving a document from the company SharePoint into their own personal file storage system on their phone. Something like Dropbox or something might be on the phone. That is getting data out of our business and onto their personal device. So I usually block this. But what we can also do is allow users to save copies to selected services. So I then take OneDrive for Business and SharePoint. So what I'm saying here is I want to block people from saving copies of organizational data apart from when they're saving them to OneDrive for Business and SharePoint because they're both company applications. You can see here, look, there's a photo library. I don't want people saving pictures to the photo library. That is leaking data out of our business. So that's a good setting for that. The next section here is about transfer telecommunication data. I leave this at any dialer app. I'm not too fussed about this. If someone sends me an email and it's got their phone number in a link below their email, I can click on that and phone them from my iPhone. I don't think that's a massive problem. I think that's okay. The next section is about receiving data from applications. So again, this is all apps. I change this to policy managed apps. So again, I'm just keeping all the data trapped within the applications that are provided in Microsoft 365. And once we choose policy managed apps, what we can do then is we can further define how we want it to work. So we can look at opening data into org documents. At the moment, that's set to allow. I select blocked, and then I add a couple of different things here. So rather than camera and photo library, again, I just choose OneDrive for Business and SharePoint. So everything is tied down. The next is about copying and pasting, okay? So if we click on this I, we can do this on anything here. It tells us what it is. So at the moment, it's set to policy managed apps with pasting. So basically, we can copy and paste any data into our managed apps, but not the other way around. So it blocks users from sharing content outwardly, but allows it inwardly. I think that is a nice feature rather than just choosing policy managed apps. But again, that's up to you. Then talks about third party keyboards. And then we move on to encryption. So we absolutely want our data to be encrypted. So we, we set that as require, okay? And again, for functionality, we're talking about syncing policy managed app data with the native apps on that device. Again, I set that to block. Do we want to print from the device, okay? That's up to you. Some people say no, some people say it's okay. Again, I set that to block. And then we're talking about browsers. So at the moment, it's any app. Again, clicking on this eye here. So Microsoft Edge allows web contact to open only in Microsoft Edge. So I like that. I don't want people using their own browsers. They can use Edge, okay? And on the org data notifications, we can keep that 
as allow. And then we click on next. And this is all about access requirements. So do we require a pin to access the application? So we're talking about when they log onto their phone and then they open Outlook, for example, it will ask for a pin when they open Outlook. And we can put require or not required. I think it's absolutely required. It can be numeric, it can be a passcode. Simple pins are things like one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D. So do we want to allow that? I generally block that because what's the point in having security? And then we can choose a pin length. So you can choose whatever you want. The minimum is obviously four, but I like to push it up to six. And then you can allow or block touch ID. You can look at biometrics and require them or not require them. You can have an option for face ID rather than a pin. So again, that's up to you. Do you want to allow face ID that is built into the iPhone or do you want to rely on the pin? I choose allow for that. Do we want to reset the pin after so many days? So again, an extra security setting. If you want that, you can choose yes and you can choose the days. I don't do that. Or you can go a step further and you can say, well, actually, we require the work or school account credentials for accessing these apps. So that would be the 365 username, password and the MFA. Again, that might annoy people every time they launch it. So you've got to keep it nice and simple whilst enhancing security. So these settings look OK to me. I'll click on next. And then we've got some conditions. OK, so what are those? Well, we've got some here already. So basically what we're saying here is when someone enters the wrong pin five times, it will prompt them to reset their pin. But what we can also do if someone enters their pin incorrectly five times is we can wipe the data. And when we say wipe the data, we're not wiping the phone, the, the, the person's photographs or anything like that. We are wiping the corporate data. So it's your data on that phone. We can simply take it off. Again, we've got some offline grace periods here. So when the device is offline for these amount of times, we can either block access or we can wipe data. Plus what we can do here, we can click on the drop down and we can set a few more options if we want just to, to make it more secure. Again, we've got some device conditions. So these are app conditions. We've also got some device conditions. So the one setting here is if it's a jailbroken or a rooted device, you just won't get access, okay? And then you can add more here. You can put like a minimum OS version, which is good for things like Cyber Essentials. But the problem with that is you will have to keep coming in here and, and altering your policy. But again, I'm just giving you an idea of what you can do. You can say, well, actually, you can only access the data if you are using a certain type of phone. So again, that is another option for you. Okay, so just get rid of that one. Click on next. And then we've got the groups. So who are we applying this to? Okay, so we'll click on add groups. And I simply set it as our users because we want it to apply to everybody. But what we can do here as well in the bottom section is we can exclude groups. So here we can be pretty granular about who is included and who isn't. We can even set different policies for different people. So we might say, well, the CEO, I want him to be able to do this, but I don't want the normal users to be able to do it. So in that scenario, you create multiple policies and you'd you'd do it based on groups. OK, you click on next and that's it. You click on create and that is how it's done. So what will happen is someone will get a phone. They will download the company apps and when they enter their username and password to actually connect to the app, it will go to this policy and it will pull that policy down. And so whatever you've set in this policy will happen on that device. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. In my opinion, every small business should be using app protection policies to provide protection to people using the personal smartphones. Look forward to seeing you again soon.